With any innovation, be it in science, technology, or genealogy, it pays for us to slow down a little bit and find out what are the benefits and what are the pitfalls of that technology. We're going to do that with Ancestry Throughlines coming up next. Howdy, I'm Devin Noel Lee with Family History Fanatics. If this is your first time here, welcome. We are a channel that tries to put the fun back into family history, helping you begin climbing your tree, understanding your DNA, and preserving your memories along the way. Be sure to hit the thumbs up, press the subscribe button, and click the bell if you want to be notified of a future videos that when they are released, especially since this is just one in a series of videos about Ancestry Three Lines. So when it comes to Ancestry Three Lines, let's evaluate it. Let's find out if they're a blessing or a curse or both. Thanks to those of you who have found our community tab here on our YouTube channel, I had asked for feedback. Do you like through lines? Do you dislike through lines? Do you not understand them? And so far, most of you, do you like it? But one of our viewers had this to say, I like that I can confirm how people are related to me, but the common ancestor might be wrong if the other party has associated the wrong person and then it gets suggested to me. Ah, a blessing, a curse, both. So in our previous video, we talked about the fact that you need to proceed with caution when climbing your family tree using Ancestry DNA through lines. You need to know where the information comes from in order to determine if the service is a blessing or a curse. Once you know you need to proceed with caution, now we can talk about what are the benefits of through lines and what, what is all the hype and hubbub about. To be honest, Ancestry through lines can save you a lot of time. Ancestry will com compare your DNA matches tree with your tree, and if you both have pr public trees or private searchable trees, Ancestry will do the fast work for you. It will show you where your likely common ancestor is. Man, wouldn't that be great if it's accurate? Yeah, it can rapidly build your tree and then you just have to do the work of validating it. Additionally, as we said in a previous video, if you have a tree and your DNA match has a tree and you guys don't overlap, but other people on the Ancestry platform have trees that overlap, then you can leverage multiple trees now to try to see how you and your DNA matches are related. And therefore, that leads you to plausible clues that you can investigate. And if you do find out that your DNA through line is valid, you might pick up some plausible clues on how to push your tree back one generation or extend it to the side. So let's look at a through line and demonstrate the benefits that I just told you in theory and show you what it looks like in practice. So you could look at your DNA match list and then have all of these people and you might not exactly see very quickly how they're all potentially related, but a through line will climb your common trees, find a common ancestor and build this possibility for you and next to no time. So it saves you time. You are leveraging the power of multiple trees. You have this person's tree, your tree, another person's tree, this person's tree, these trees, and maybe even some in the middle bridging the gap. So what happens is you've climbed up your tree and you've come up with this uncle you have a possible theory about this brother, but you're not really sure. But now Ancestry through lines is telling you, hey, yeah, you guys are related. And oh, by the way, there's some more people that you could investigate and start establishing your the validity of the theory you have so you can start um, supporting the evidence you have and you have plausible theories. So another benefit that it kind of alluded into that demonstration is that 
you can get evidence for your hypotheses. I have a second great grandfather who I have sound genealogy theories of how he's related to his parents and his siblings, but DNA provides an extra layer of evidence that I'm on the right path. So as you look at William Townsend's profile, you see that I have all of these records, but guess what I can't find in these records? I cannot find any record that names his parents and his siblings. Instead, I have to use something called inferential genealogy. I found that Milby was serving in the same unit in the Civil War as William did. There are high probabilities that people who serve in the same military units together, especially during the Civil War and the American Revolution, they served with family members. And because of the timing and the place and some other factors in researching Milby, I believe that Milby and William were brothers. I also found an entry where John Townsend had a, a child who was in his home in a census record, and that child was his niece. Now, when you look at William in the census record at the same time and place, his oldest daughter is not in their home. And incidentally, his oldest daughter is the same name as that niece over in John's census record. But because I found Elizabeth housing Milby and some other children, I started to piece together this tree and somewhere along the line, I pick up the names of the parents because one out of all of those siblings identified who his parents were when, when they died or her, her parents when they died. So I have a lot of genealogical evidence, but DNA can help me attempt to establish whether this theory is true. When I go to the ancestry DNA through lines for William Townsend, I see that I have my common ancestor, William, up there at the top. And then I have Perry, someone who I alluded to in the previous segment. And if I go down the tree, I have two DNA matches that I've kind of hidden because I want to protect their privacy. Um, I have two DNA matches that come down the Perry line and we match. And so I can go through and continue validating that information and I might have pieced together the answer to my question, who are William Townsend's siblings and what are the names of his parents? Now, another benefit of Ancestry DNA through lines is you could rapidly predict what are the relationships of those people that have the very small DNA segments. Not all of them are going to be accurate, but wouldn't it be nice if you had a tool that rapidly pieces together those small segments, especially because their relationships are going to be so far distant. So I have a fourth great grandfather. His name is Andrew Jackson Peake. So when I come to this profile, I can see that I have a line of descendancy and I'm actually down this line and I have some very close large Cinnamorgan matches over on this side of my tree. But if I come this way, I have some matches. So when I come down that line from Sarah, I have a 12 Centimorgan map, I have a 14 Centimorgan map, and I have a six Centimorgan map. And notice all of these lines, they're all potential. And it's entirely possible that I don't have any of those surnames on my tree so I wouldn't recognize them as being from Andrew Jackson Peak. So let's address some of the pitfalls that you want to be aware of when you're working with ancestry through lines. As I said in a previous video, you are not triangulating your DNA because you do not know if you're matching segments in the same spot. As such, you may be genealogically related to those individuals I just shared to you in that potential way, but you may not be because their DNA is in a different part of your chromosome, which would mean they might actually be related to you in a different way. Which brings me to your next problem 
and pitfall with your through lines is ancestry only shows you one possibility one possible path that you are connected you can't reject that one if you find out it to be inaccurate and then trigger a new possibility to show up so who does that affect well if you have known endogamy where people intermarry each other and then you are related in multiple ways the through lines won't pick up the accurate path because it gets confused when it hits endogamy. And so it may give you false suggestions. And if you have any mistakes in your tree or other people have mistakes in your tree, you can receive false suggestions and you will constantly be given the false line, which you can't reject and then pick up the more accurate line because other people have changed their tree to reflect the accurate relationship. So the next pitfall is that ancestry through lines can perpetuate false theories. They're basing your through lines, they leave the DNA, and as they start climbing the tree, or as the computer starts climbing the tree, it doesn't know what's valid and what's not valid, so it can continually pop propagate and share and perpetuate those false trees that we have been trying to get away from, from the junk that's in ancestry member trees on occasion. So here is an example of a false tree. This is not my fourth multiple great grandfathers. Why? What are we missing? Well, we don't see other branches. This guy had tons of children and his children had tons of children and they had tons of children. And the likelihood that nobody took a DNA test and nobody has a tree built up to Captain Nathaniel Gordon from North Carolina is not true. They do have their trees. They have lots of trees and lots of those people have tested DNA. So this is perpetuating that false information. Now, a final pitfall of ancestry through lines is it does not deal with non-biological relationships really well. I mean, I probably have to do a video in the future to show you how my tree looks now and then fix it and then show you how it looks then so you can see how it doesn't play out. But let me just go ahead and walk you through a scenario. So this is my ancestry through lines that is showing up on my pedigree chart. And we have Louise, and then you see the parents, Harry and Laura, and then these other parents. Well, here's the problem. That is the adopted line. And yet, if you see those little icons, ancestry is trying to tell me that's a through line, which means it would be a genetic relationship. Now do you see why I say that you could genetically match somebody, but as you start building your through lines, you've left the genes and now you're in the genealogy research? Now I need to fix my tree, but when I finally do the video about how you have to fix it, it's going to be a little bit frustrating. But let's say you didn't know that there was a misattributed parentage event. Let's say you didn't know that Louise really was adopted by Harry and Laura. Well, then you're going to be confused. You're going to see, oh, hey, look, there's through lines and there's a tree. There's some DNA matches there. Well, let's go back to Harry's father, William Lester Long. Now he had multiple children and several of them had, um, children not all of the lines it kind of fizzled out but surely somebody took a dna test these days but even still if we go back one more generation to john w long we're falling into the trap that dana Lloyd says is a likely weak dna line we're all from the same tree we're all from the same line there's no additional branches something is going on that's not right so john long did have lots of children and those children had lots of children and those children had lots of children and nobody is showing up as a match so there's outside chance that there's a dna match floating around but i know 
that Louise is connected to her adopted line and the through lines aren't working. So be careful when you're using DNA through lines. You have to validate that you're looking at a genetic relationship that has a genealogical records to back it up. So I hope this video has helped you decide for yourself whether ancestry through lines are a blessing or a curse or a little bit of both. Always remember to proceed with caution and answer our question of the day. What are some of the benefits that you are finding and what are some of the pitfalls that you're trying to avoid? Thanks so much for joining us. If you like this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up button, drop a comment, any questions that you have, and we will see you in the next video. In the meantime, check out a genetic video here and a genealogy research video here.